more than three decades ago, for the first time, the world heard about the Baikonur site, which had become the launch pad for many pioneer projects of the Soviet Union in the field of cosmonautics. July 1988. In a few hours, the automatic Phobos station will begin its long term of 200 day mission to the Mars. The Proton Heavy booster will launch the station into space and that will be its next operational launch. The Proton booster takes a special place in the long history of the Soviet space science and technology. Its long-term space operation began as early as in the mid-60s. It inserted spacecraft into near-Earth orbits and launched automatic stations into space to explore the Moon, the Mars, the Venus, the Halley's Comet. 129 launches of the Proton Booster, 119 of them successful, were performed during the past decades. None of the rockets of this class have such good statistics as the Proton Booster. The Proton Booster is assembled of separate units and has tandem structural configuration. It can have two, three, or four stages. The central unit of the booster is practically an oxidizer tank. Six units for fuel are attached to it having single chamber movable liquid propellant engines. These are powerful, economical, and reliable rocket engines of compact dimensions which operate on high temperature two component propellant. Assembly and individual tests of separate units are performed in the Cosmodrome System Integration and Checkout Building. Perhaps the main load is on the Proton First Stage thrusters. They are to lift off the booster with the launch mass up to 700 tons and put it into the height of dozens of kilometers. When the booster's first stage engines begin to down-ray thrust, the so-called hot firing of the second stage takes place, which has four single-chamber, movable liquid propellant engines. The third stage of the booster has a single-chamber, fixed liquid propellant engine and steering four-chamber engine. Engines of the second and third stages operate on the same two-component propellant as the first unit does. The Mir orbital station, with a mass of about 21 tons, was launched by means of the Proton three-stage booster in 1986. The first stage engines have been forced in order to launch such a heavy payload into orbit. The boost unit, that is the fourth stage, considerably extends the Proton's capabilities. These units are equipped with liquid propellant restartable engines. It is these units that enable the launch of space vehicles with a mass of about two tons into any point of geostationary orbit. Most of the Soviet scientific space vehicles and interplanetary stations with a mass of about five tons were launched by the Proton four-stage boosters. The air flight airplanes deliver the satellite and the required equipment installed inside a pressurized cabin to the airfield which is located in dozens of kilometers away from Baikonur. Glavkosmos USSR gives the climate an opportunity to accompany the space vehicle and keep constant eye on it during all stages of delivery and pre-flight preparation. In the Cosmodrome's technical zone, the satellite is unpacked and installed inside a special chamber which meets requirements 
for cleanness and temperature stability. Electrical and ceiling tests, as well as the test of solar panels deployments, are performed at this place. After final operations, fueling and compressed gas charging are performed. The satellite is docked to the last stage of the booster. Overall dimensions of space vehicle installed under the shroud may be up to 4.2 meters in height and 3.3 meters in the cylindrical path of the satellite. The Proton Booster is one of the most reliable rockets in the world with good operation and thrust characteristics and has a wide spectrum of usage. Today, the Soviet space science and industry have gained great experience which makes it possible for our country to offer mutually advantageous cooperation practically in any field of space technology. This includes boosters for foreign space vehicles launching and Soviet satellites leasing space information submission, and environmental protection investigation. Love Cosmos USSR is open for cooperation on the commercial basis and looking forward to your proposals.